Lily May was the most treacherous of mothers, a discontented small-town beauty who would appear in his life for a day or two and then disappear off in a cloud of perfume leaving the young Truman Capote feeling desolate, alone, and abandoned. The TV miniseries, Capote vs. the Swans, focuses on the true events that unfold after Truman Capote publishes excerpts from his unfinished book, Answered Prayers, based on the group of women in mid-century New York high society that he called his swans. The show portrays Truman Capote as a tortured man with many flaws who is haunted by the ghost of his mother, Lily Mae Capote, who reminds him who he is and where he came from before his rise to celebrity and success. Her depiction in the show made me curious. Who was she? How was her relationship with him reflected in his interactions with the swans? And how did Capote's mother end her turbulent life? So as you might imagine, I did some research and here is what I found. She was born Lily May Falk in Monroeville, Alabama on January 19th, 1905. Despite being born into poverty only to be orphaned soon after and left to live with relatives, Lily May harbored aspirations far grander than anything found in rural Alabama. In 1923, escape came in the form of 25-year-old Arch Persons, a fast-talking ladies' man whose two biggest assets were his beguiling charm and a flashy sports car. Dazzled by both, Lily May imagined driving off to the big cities of her dreams with her Prince Charming by her side. Her wish had come true, or so she thought, when she and Arch married impulsively soon after they met, and they set off on a grand honeymoon. Two weeks into the honeymoon, Nina discovered that Arch had no money, and that in fact, he had no means to afford any kind of lifestyle at all. Nina raged against his deception so much so that Arch sent his new bride back to her relatives in Monroeville post-haste. Nina set her mind on divorcing Arch and planning a new escape with the help of her budding beauty and an awakened libido, but alas, she soon discovered she was pregnant. For a time, she contemplated abortion, but when she learned that Arch was living in New Orleans, she decided her best hope was to reconcile and go to live with him there just so long as it was far away from the dull country life of Monroeville. On September 30th, 1924, Lily May gave birth to Truman Streckfuss Persons, a beautiful, blonde, doll-like infant hoping that a son would somehow change Arch from a smooth-talking con man who couldn't hold a job into a refined man of wealth who could give her stability and social status. Once again, her dreams dissipated as she and Arch took to living in a series of hotel rooms across America in pursuit of his dismal, get-rich-quick schemes. For the first six years of his life, Truman Capote found himself in one hotel room after another, where he was either locked away unattended while his parents were out for the night or he was trapped in the room with his promiscuous mother and the many men who would visit her bed while Arch was away. This time of abandonment and neglect set the tone for Truman's early childhood. He suffered this upsetting itinerant life until Lily May, replicating her own childhood, abruptly deposited her only child with her sisters still living in Monroeville. She was a social climber, propelled by unrealistic aspirations with a failure of a husband and a demanding child who would only get in her way. According to the Capote biographer Gerald Clark, Lily May would occasionally visit from some distant place dressed in stylish, expensive clothes creating an air of excitement and envious glances from her friends. But soon, she would disappear in a fragrant cloud of evening in Paris, her favorite perfume. Truman was always desolate when she drove off, Clark recounted, Once, finding a perfume bottle she had forgotten, he drank it to the bottom, as if he could keep her essence deep inside himself. Truman told Clark what it felt like for him as a young boy to see her go. On one visit, I convinced myself that she was going to take me away with her, but after three or four days, she left, and I stood in the road watching her drive away in a big black Buick, which got smaller and smaller and smaller. Imagine a dog watching and waiting and hoping to be taken away. That is the picture of me then. In 1932, Lily May, now Nina, 
met a Cuban Wall Street broker named Joseph Capote and married him soon after. It took her almost a year to get Truman out of Monroeville and to New York, even though she'd easily won his custody. By 1935, Joe adopted Truman as his own, thereby giving him what would become the infamous name of Truman Capote. Her marriage to Joe brought Nina almost everything she'd dreamed of, and she lived lavishly. First, the family lived in Manhattan, then briefly moved to Greenwich in Connecticut, and then returned to New York, where Nina got to finally live on the coveted Park Avenue. But Nina was a woman who could never feel settled, living in the shadow of her own childhood abandonment and constantly battling feelings of inadequacy while segments of New York society rejected her, even though she did her best to fit in. Which brings us to how Truman's childhood and his relationship with his mother led him to betray his women friends, the Swans. What did I do for you, exactly? You avenged me, of course. All those people that had no time for me. Those women of New York society. Just like your swans. You knew how I felt. So you took them out, didn't you? And you did it so brilliantly. With such surgical precision. So much deep hatred. That scene from the 2024 show Capote vs. the Swans pretty much sums it up. Truman loved his mother, but deep down, he also hated his mother. He resented her for abandoning him over and over again. And he loved his New York society women, his swans, but ultimately he came to resent them as well. For two decades, he had listened to their secrets, their deepest feelings, their unfulfilled desires. And then one day, he decided to publish excerpts from a new book he was working on that revealed their secrets. Like his mother, the swans were beautiful, but broken. Like his mother, the swans never felt secure no matter the riches their husbands provided. Their insecurities lay in their inabilities to keep their philandering husbands close to home. To be loved unconditionally, to feel as though they had value that went beyond appearances. And just like his mother, many of the swans were not good mothers to their children. In a sense, one could say that Babe Paley, his favorite and most loved swan, was essentially a stand-in for his mother. Babe Paley poured her heart out to Truman and he took it all in. Like the sin eater who ate the sins of others so they could be absolved from their sins and garner some peace in the world, Truman absorbed the fears and anxieties of Babe. She was his confidant and he was her empathetic therapist. If Truman Capote's childhood taught him anything, it was that any minute the winds could shift and no matter how hard he tried, no matter what he had to offer, she could, and most probably would, leave him someday. But still, from within his deep-seated yearning for maternal affection and acceptance, he offered them a shoulder to cry on, and he kept doing this over and over again, through the years, not only with Babe, but with several others. Truman Capote lived in constant fear that one day Babe and the others would walk away and forget all he had done for them, so he took matters in his own hand and he betrayed them. He exposed their inner worlds through the use of thinly veiled characters in La Cote Basque 1965. When it was published, Babe rejected Truman completely. She cast him aside, as did most of his other swans, ousting him out of their high society circle and refusing to let him back in. Babe died of cancer just shy of three years later, having never spoken to him again. By this time, Capote's mother had already left him one final time when she committed suicide. It was her one final act of abandonment. On January 4, 1954, Nina Capote died at the age of 48 from an overdose of sleeping pills. She ended up back in her hometown of Monroeville in Baptist Cemetery. Two years before her death, Joe Capote had been caught embezzling money from his place of employment. Nina lost the money that upheld any the status she had been able to achieve no matter how tenuous. Once again, she was about to face rejection from New York's high society. Those women who were just like Truman's swans. 
the bricks of her world had come tumbling down and Lily May wasn't strong enough to bear it. There was another swan by the name of Anne Woodward who Capote outright hated, and you can find out all about her in this next video.